Anyway, let's talk about what we know about these caves. Good afternoon YouTube and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm at Loch Sweden here and I'm heading round to the loch, the next loch over because there's a cave over there called St Columbus Cave. Now, it's about two miles as the crow flies up over this hill. It's going to take me the best part of an hour to get there because I need to ride all the way around on these tracks. Nice little house. It's a nice enough day for it today, it's a little bit overcast but that's alright. Let's see what we can see. It's the head of Loch Sweden here. It's quite nice. I come round here a lot, obviously. <laughs> Let's move on. I'm going to need to stop in at Loch Gilped, get some fuel. Let me know in the comments, folks, if anybody else is shocked with the price of fuel these days. Unbelievable. Let's go! <laughs> Ah, it's so nice to be back on the bike again. That's been the best part of two weeks between being, you know, in Bulgaria and then having the, the bike in the garage in, in several pieces. So we're cutting back across this peninsula again. And this will essentially take me to the other side of those hills where I started. About 15 miles to Kilbury which we'll be passing through and 29 miles to Tarbot on this little loop so it's not too far of course it's a little back road so you're not going to be going too fast look at these some people live in some pretty funky places let's see this little river have a quick look hostel <laughs> something tells me there's not a hostel up here water coming here. Let's have a look this side. It's someone's house. I don't even know what this is called. I'll check it on the map. Wow. Absolutely gorgeous out here. It's a little bit windy. Especially now coming over the hill. Well, okay, it's a lot windy. <laughs> Fantastic. Lots of these little forest tracks now. I wonder if I could explore some of these in the coming days. I think I probably could. It's amazing out here, pretty bleak. Probably not somewhere you want to break down. <laughs> uh, having said that, I've had this bike absolutely stripped to the bone this week. <laughs> doing lots of work on it and it's just basic maintenance jobs to be honest but I'm very conscious I've been doing quite a lot of those videos recently so I'm going to just release those over the coming weeks I'm really just keen to get back on the road again probably noticed my bar ends are missing there's a bit of a story behind that but I'll explain all of that in these videos when I do the installs you'll have a look at that anyway let's go find this cave I've no idea what this little lock is called it's not very big though Wow, look at this. It would be nice if it was a little bit warmer. I tell you, with this tall windscreen, you really notice the difference. If you stand up, that wind really claps you in the face. When you're sitting down, it's, uh, it's pretty nice, actually. This is the road round to Kilberry. But I think this is perhaps the road I need to go to, because Ellery is Ellery Estate. And I believe this cave is on there somewhere, or in there somewhere. Ah, there we go. We're going to find out. It says, no through road to Castle Sween. Which is pretty much where I started today. I will find out. 
Mm, these places never cease to amaze me. People have been living in these places for centuries. So this one. So that one. I probably need to check the maps. I don't mind if I get lost actually. <laughs> A little bit of an adventure. Lockhead House. Lockhead, so that means we're at the head of the lock, obviously. Oh yeah, of course, there it is there. So this tells me I should be heading the right way. I think the caves are over in this hill somewhere. I don't know exactly where. But Castle Sween, Lossian should be over this mountain. That's where I started, the other side of this thing. <laughs> I don't know if this thing is signposted, you would think it would be. Find out soon enough. I could get the bike up there. It's a bit muddy, but that's alright. Path there up to the trees. I'm gonna check the maps. Because I've no idea. We can't be far from it. It seems like we've still got a little bit of, a little bit to go. We should be here. Assuming the GPS is right enough. I don't even know how far back from the road these things are. I'll find them. I'll definitely find them. Could it be up in there? Wow. Oh my days. Maybe I won't find them. <laughs> and then... Cove Cottage. St Columbus Cave. So I guess the cottage is there somewhere. I think the cave's going to be up that little path. Let's have a look. Nice place to have a cave right enough. Stunning. Now, this is a road, to, I guess, to someone's cottage. So no girl, I'm just wondering what this old um, ruin might be. Right, let's go and explore. I'll keep the helmet on as I walk up here. Take it off when we get closer. Just always nice to keep the hands a little bit free. The squidgy stuff. Actually, there's actually vehicle tracks up here. Somebody's been up here in a quad, so you could come up here in your Himalayan. It's a bit squidgy, but it would do it easily enough. It's hardly worth it though. Now that is a cave. Wow. It's got a gate and everything. So who was St. Columbus? Well, he was a priest or a monk. Let's call him a holy man. <laughs> anyway, he came over from Ireland. He landed on the Mull of Kintyre, then he made his way up the west coast of Scotland here, right up this peninsula. Now, we know that he stopped up at Dinad, which is in Kilmartin Glen. Now, I did a video on that a couple of months ago. I'll put a little link to that up here as well. And then from there, he settled on Iona, essentially bringing Christianity to Scotland. Right then, let's go look at this cave. The sun's starting to come through the trees here. I really like this up. It's lovely. You're certainly not going to get lost in this cave. I've never been in it before. This almost looks like a little altar or something. This has clearly been carved out at some point. And if you look down in here, there's clearly a second part to this cave. There's a little cave closer to here. Smaller than this, but not as small as this apparently. We're going to go and try and find it. Now, back to Columbus. Did he stay in this cave? We've got absolutely no idea. But what we do know from archaeological finds and stuff, that people have been living in this cave, or in these caves here, for thousands of years. There's deposits in here that date back to monolithic times. So back to that period where you had people, perhaps, and even earlier than that, living at Comartin Glen and putting these uh, stone monuments, your standing stones up. You're going back sort of five, six, seven thousand years. People have been living in these caves. Oh wow, look. Room with a view. Now they also found two bodies close to here. I don't know exactly where. The remains of two bodies. Um, but they haven't been able to appropriately date them. Now, I don't know if that's because of the condition of them, but certainly 
They're very, very old. <laughs> yeah. They weren't buried here last week. We're probably talking thousands of years ago. <laughs> okay, so next door there is a smaller cave as well. These stones have obviously been laid out a more modern time. You see people setting fires and stuff in here. Who's this? Darren. Well done, Darren. Darren's an artist. I this. find this interesting how people do this type of thing. It's almost like, you know, putting little cairns and stuff in. Interesting. It certainly keep you dry, that's for sure. Lovely today. Some starting to come through now, it's beautiful. I tell you what though, if you were a caveman or a cave woman, not a bad place to set up a little home. You know, it's well sheltered, you've got a really nice view of the loch. <laughs> yeah. You've got lots of natural water sources around here. That would be clean, that would be dry certainly. What a beautiful night. Thank you.